We are not dead yet. Wolverhampton Wanderers 1, Everton 1. Bloody hell. I hate this game. I think there's about three renditions of Spirit of the Blues going on here. This is Matt Flusk at Molyneux, handing it over to the main man. Right, there's Matt Flusk, who's at Molyneux. Uh, we're not dead yet. He said, I've got Mark Mosey and Adam Jones with me here. Um, Adam, they look dead for long spells there, but fucking hell, mate. I look dead for long <laughs> spells there, I'm not going to lie. Goodness me. Uh, <laughs> like, we were saying before the game, didn't we, that, like, the... The lineup choice was interesting to say the least. Yeah. I think they dealt with it quite well up until a couple of injuries hit the team, and I just think Dyche's reaction to those injuries was weird. Yeah, like it was weird at best. Like, so like I, I I just don't understand why you bring on Michael Keane to play right back. Like I know Mason Holgate didn't. Well, he's clearly play. better as a striker. Yeah, setting up goals well, in the exactly, box. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, I know Mason Holgate didn't play well last week, but, you know, I, I kind of let him off because it was probably, like, the second time that he's ever played left-back in his life. You know, like, I, I just feel like he was the, a more obvious choice to go there. And then, you know, you've got Michael Keane with his turn and circle of a double-decker bus, like, getting done in for that opening goal. And it, it, it was just... We needed a miracle, and it, as it turns out, the miracle was all three of the centre-backs that we had on the pitch <laughs> getting involved in in our goal, and one of those centre-backs playing up front. Like, honestly, I don't understand this Everton season at this point. I'm still really confused as to whether a point even does anything for us. Yeah. Because, like, obviously we're recording this before... Leeds yeah. have played and before Forest have played and Head, before heads are very much still detached I think it's fair yeah. to say but like we all feel better don't we now I, I feel, that, I feel that, better that, that, yeah. that's a good thing yeah, yeah 100% I feel better than if we'd have lost because you know Leeds could draw against West Ham tomorrow I suppose and I, I still think Leicester will get beat by Newcastle but yeah like that that it, it opens up another possibility for us I suppose but I just never wanted it to go to that last game of the season and the fact that it has now is just it's just that little feeling that's gnawing away yeah that's a, that's at least what we didn't have last season it yeah. never went to that yeah, last game yeah. like even though like i think it turned out that even if we hadn't have beaten palace we'd have still stayed up or whatever yeah. like yeah cuz uh, Burnley got beat by yeah, Newcastle yeah, yeah, yeah. so like even if it had gone to the last game we'd have been fine but like it it doesn't really matter the fact that it is still actually going to the last game this time still feels a little bit different to me and I don't like it I just like Dwight McNeil played 90 at left back <laughs> Michael Keane played 70 5-ish was it yeah. well 70 at right back and then Nine up front. <laughs> um, Mason Holgate was brought on as an emergency tactic to win points <laughs> in a Where did he play? Game. Genuinely, I I don't know he, where he played. He played specialist throw and taker. <laughs> <laughs> it's like not many things have happened since JFK's assassination <laughs> in 9-11 that make me think I need to remember where I was when all of this happened but Ever even uh, Everton's point away at Molyneux to take us on to 33 after 37 <laughs> games is undoubtedly one of those things that will surely for the sake of the rest of humanity never happen again there can't um, have been a Premier League goal ever which has been pre-assist assist goal all by centre-offs that, that must be a first time is that, ever is that, is that the most central football team that's ever been put out <laughs> across a 90 you know all four of our central midfielders started all 
12 of our centre halves played and were involved in the goal. It was just, um, you know, uh, it, it's great now, 10 minutes after full time, as a singular moment to say that, you know, we're, we're all, of course, incredibly relieved that that happened. Um, what a point does for us, you know, pre game, we all said that that was, you know, if you were hand picking opponents, you'd want to an unmotivated Wolves side to be one of your last two games if you're in Everton situation wouldn't you and, and we absolutely have not capitalised on that um, I think any any kind of enthusiasm I've got for that point is, is definitely swallowed up by the fact that that is probably one of the worst Everton performances that I've seen for a, a long time second half um, yeah. and you know th- th- you know th- that's, that's not solely from a technical a, like a, a purely technical point of view which obviously was a massive factor but I think the the thing when you get down to this point in the season and, and the, the situation that Everton are in at the moment is that you you rely on the fact that when the time comes you have to perform we, we've seen it from near relegated sides for so many years gone by and that these kind of freak results and the, these massive performances happen when you need them most mm. And at the time when Everton needed all of their players, their manager, and, and a, a big performance most, we simply weren't there. You know, we, we, we've lashed a load of massive fellas up front in the last minute and scrapped a goal. And it, it, it's great. Um, the, the point may prove valuable. But the, the, the sheer lack of know-how about Everton's whole performance, um, about Amadou Anana's reluctance to take down the player who was obviously going to cut through Everton's yeah. back line um, it, it, it just screamed of a team that had met its time to be relegated um, you know it, that, that may come to us in the next week it, it may come to us in the next year or two um, but it, it feels as though you know if we're going to take this back from today and go full big picture we're a football club that's asking to be destroyed um, and you know and that, that was a bit like all the chickens going on to Roost Day, wasn't it? It's like, yeah, yeah, you don't sign a left-back or a striker and your left-back and striker are injured. Yeah. Like, what, what, what do you expect to happen? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, at, at the moment where Dominic Carvalhoen goes off at 1-0, um, all of us collectively bite your hand off for a point for the rest of the season. That, yeah. That's how pivotal that lad is for, for Everton's creativity. Um, you know, we're, we're back to sheer willpower and smoke bombs next week, aren't we, in terms of how we get over the line against Bournemouth. Um on paper again they're one of the teams that you think I'd love to be playing them on the last day when they've got nothing to play for but I, I, I don't see a capable football team and, a, and a, a, a capable football player at the moment I mean on 85 today I think quite often you think well at least if at least if Kale gets a chance or at least <laughs> if it falls to Calvert-Loon you know all, all of these players who are capable of moments and it, it seemed as though we didn't have them today. I think we've, we've obviously come across one through through Fortune, but next week, next season, the, it's all going to need a lot more thought and a lot, a lot, a lot better footballers. And um, you know, if, if we are to somehow survive next week, um, massive things need to happen. And you know, if the media is to be believed, then massive things are happening behind the scenes. But you know, Everton as it exists at the moment cannot continue um, because at one point in the next few years, going into the final day of the season on 33 points with a goal difference of minus 24 will mean that you are long finished. Um, yeah. And it's a miracle that we're not. Um, Yerry Mean and the Adam. Um, mm. It looked at one point in it before Brighton that he was going to just see his Everton career out not kicking a ball warming the bench he's been back in the side great against Brighton um, alright today I thought in the main mm. but I mean stick that lad in the six yard box and he, he, he probably knows where the back of the net is better than most of the players we've got on that squad we, weirdly yeah like <laughs> I, 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 I'm not sure why we didn't put Mina up front instead of Keane for, for like I was going to say that like, for, for the last for the, for the last few minutes like at least he'd have been Know, a bit of a bell end about it as well. Yeah. Like he, he's been yeah. pinching, pinching the centre backs as well. Like <laughs> do, doing all of those shenanigans. Like it, 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 it would have been great. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that it's that it's him who's got that goal. And you know, if that is, you know, a goal that we look at at the end of the season as being the one to keep us up, I'm happy that he will probably leave the club yeah. with with that on 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 him. 
I think the the problem that this game brings up for me is that there's real questions about Dyche. Uh, like uh, uh, after, after this game and like obviously people have had questions about Dice before this game as well but I think this game in particular you know his decision to bring on Keane as a right back was just baffling like why wouldn't you change to a five at the back system as soon as you bring on Keane there was a reason that he didn't that he hasn't been starting Michael Keane there's a reason that he didn't start Michael Keane from the beginning in, the, in this game like all logic would have pointed to him starting keen in the in this match when we've you know lost Michalenko we've you know we we've got so many issues we've got so many issues uh, in defense like everyone was thinking oh are we going to switch to a five at the back before this game and we didn't and like there's just so, there's just something there about like he, he there's something there that he didn't trust keen like he did trust keen against everybody's wishes for a long time and then suddenly it switched and he didn't and for some reason, he went against that 20 minutes into this match to bring him on as a right back. And it's like Traore went straight over. Yeah. And like, it's, it's one of them, like, I think tra- playing against Traore is a bit different to playing against any other winger because, like, you just need to be fast, don't you? Yeah. So he's, he's not, like, he's not going to dip in, like, into his pockets, is he? And, like, take the ball and spin. He just knocks it and goes, doesn't it's he? Not, like, it's not even necessarily being fast. You've just got to react well to what the person against you is doing. And that is what Michael Keane just can't do like he's he's fantastic at defending crosses into the box he's fantastic at sitting back winning headers being that like last ditch defender he's a he's very good at doing that don't get me wrong but putting him out on the flank exposes all of his all of his shortcomings so I, I just don't understand why a manager would think that that's the right thing to do and then you know, I, I don't, I don't think actually the like the substitutions that he made in the second half were any good either. I think we've, like, you know, as Mosey said there, we kind of, we kind of got this goal through pure luck rather than anything else. Like credit to their keeper as well, who had a bit of a shocker. Uh, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he did, he did ball. have a, he did have a bit of a shocker, and you know, lo and behold, if we'd have tested him a little bit more, <laughs> maybe, maybe we'd have got a little bit more out of it. The, the one shot we had on him from Damari Gray that he nearly, yeah, spooked, he nearly, yeah, yeah, yeah he into, into his own net. net. Yeah. So like, I, I think that that's the issue that I've got. Like, there are legitimate questions over, you know, like obviously I know the the major issues go much higher and much further than Dyche like I I understand that but if we're talking about this game in particular a huge problem was Dyche's decisions and like that that brings up legitimate questions about whether he is the man you know regardless of whether Everton stay up or go down it brings up legitimate questions over whether he is the man to take Everton forward and when you're a club who are in the midst, you know, like the t- all the talk is in the midst of a potential takeover from whether it's MSP yeah. or seven seven seven. Like, I I think that's going to be much more protracted than like everybody says it's going to be. Like, there's there's no way that that happens like within a week Next of the week end of the season. Or, yeah. Like, the, like the, there's no way that that happens. It will continue up until like August at least, maybe September. Somebody's got to make a decision over Dyche. And yeah. we've got a huge transfer window coming up, regardless of what division we're in. And like, I, 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 I just think that this game brought up more questions than it did answers. Like, I, I, I understand that this point could be a good point yeah. if all results go our way and if we were to beat Bournemouth. But do I, do I trust that that's going to yeah. happen? Probably not. I'd, I'd love honest. us to go full Cheng Tosun with the takeover and announce it at half time <laughs> wouldn't it just yeah. be fantastic you, when we're 2-0 down to Bournemouth yeah. and, uh, uh, you know, we're going down we're going down but uh, we're getting taken over so don't worry everybody yeah, yeah. yeah. Everton's going down with a billion in the bank <laughs> yeah um, but that, that, just what Adam was saying there like it's, it's sort of throwing this forward a bit like if, if it is the situation where beat Bournemouth we stay up on the last day yeah. we've got to do it without Dominic Carvalho and yeah. potentially when it looks very much like we will and that is I mean unless we just go Keane me and Atarkos go up front again it's like, like well, what's the route to goal? well route one 
sadly, isn't it? You know, not none of us, none of us as Evertonians want to see the style of football that we've resorted to today. But tell me, I'm the only person who wasn't excited every time we got a free kick on the halfway line because <laughs> yeah. that that is simply how Everton generate their their higher XG these days, isn't it? By putting it forward to fruit machines up front, um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And for that reason, seven, seven, seven yeah. probably <laughs> should get it, um, because we we are we are simply a catalogue of yard dogs. Um, and we said it before the game, and that we we've got we lot have got a, a lot of of physical prowess there. There was a lot of people who could cause a lot of issues, um, but you you can't just be massive. You've got to show a little bit of desire and a little bit of, of grit in order to, to get into situations, to get the ball into the box, to get on the end of balls on that, that come into the box. Um, and I just, you know, 36 games in for, for a massive football team who were on the brink of, of you know, demise. I, I, I'd like to think that we come out of here and look at, you know, 14 or 15 lads who got on the pitch today and think, you, you gave me the impression you would die for the cause today. Mm. And... I, I don't really look at any of them. You know, we, we talk about these big characters that play in the middle of the park for Everton, like the Corey and, you know, Idris Gay, and Nana being the massive one for me. You know, ch- cheerleading the Everton fans is lovely, but w- when it comes to it, when the pressure is on and when we need people to step up, is there anyone in this squad other than Seamus Coleman who really gives you the impression that they really care as much as we well, do? Just boots up, like, that first goal, just boots him up in the air. Oh. Like, I mean, well, how many times have we seen that? I think, you know, I think it was Wayne Rooney years ago at, at Leicester um, where, you know, we got our arses under to us and, and very early in that game, we could have prevented an early goal. It was Damari Gray who went past them, wasn't it? Was it? <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> welcome to Everton. Um, but, you know, there needs to be, there needs to be these conversations before games like this about if someone's cutting through our, our midfield, they come down. If seven of you get booked, it happens, but we protect our own football club at all costs. But it's like if, if the fastest player in the entire league is running directly at yeah. your back, you know, a stretch back four, which has already got two midfielders in it anyway. Yeah. For, just, for, just kick him up in the air. For a lad who collects yellow cards like we collected footy stickers as kids, <laughs> like it's, it's mental how the most aggressive person in the world almost comes into himself when, when we need him most and you know again th- this isn't the style of play that we want to see we don't want to see Everton players volleying people up in the air just just. well I do yeah mate yeah. But you, you, yeah. you don't want it to be because of the fact that we're bad at footy um, <laughs> but th- that is unfortunately the situation that we're in and that there has to be this this know-how about how to do things like that because I guarantee if Leeds are 1-0 up at West Ham tomorrow there'll be players getting volleyed left right and centre yeah. in order yeah. to protect yeah. that goal line and I, I just don't get that feeling at the moment you know it, it, it's <laughs> It, th- there's a weird level of excitement going into next Sunday because it's the last game, because it's a Goodison. I don't think. <laughs> I'm, I'm not I'll there. Say that yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, see you at yeah, the bus. The, Welcome. The, yeah, this is this is before this is a like literally five twenty nine. Forest smash like, Arsenal like, three 0 Yeah. yeah. Forest set a minute away from kicking off against the Arsenal. It, it is fair to say that if we go back sort of ten weeks into the season, any one of us given the chance to win against Bournemouth on the last day of the season probably would have taken But that it. might not be enough. Absolutely, it might not be enough. But th- 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 there has to be something from the players that, that in the last few minutes today that makes me think you, th- there's, there's no sense of urgency about them for the, for the entire, what was it, 100 minutes today. I, ju- I just don't get that feeling. Like I, I, We spoke about this during the game today in that you know the whole build-up to next week, the you know the the furore around the possibility of relegation and what potentially might happen after next week game. It, is the level of energy really there for many of us? You know, none of us want to see Everton go into a game, and you know I don't want to go on the pitch. You know, I I, yeah. I want the players on the pitch to do all of that for me. I, I don't want to celebrate being the fourth. The the. the the fourth shittest team in the league yeah. that, that's not an achievement and I think all, all of the goodwill and all of the energy worryingly was used up last weekend you know we'll all be there next week and, and we'll give it all for that 90 but I, I just I, I think the, there's a tangible sense of anger around everything at the moment and I think you know, I'm, I'm, I'm finding it difficult as happy as I am that we've we've drawn the game today and we've got a point out of a game that we really 
really didn't deserve anything out of. I, I'm finding it hard to just let that settle and enjoy the moment because of how angry I am at, at Everton in its entirety. And I think the, that's, the, that's the real issue for me. Like, the way the players left the pitch against Man City last week, you know, on the face of it, that should have been a very demoralising defeat. Whereas the players left the pitch with, you know, a, a huge amount of goodness yeah, and yeah, still behind yeah, yeah. them. I was still there, like, uh, applauding them, cheering them on. All the players on the pitch were appreciated it. They all walked around the pitch, applauding everybody before they went down. And they've just wasted it. Like, uh, that, like I, I, re- I really yeah. feel like they've does just... That, does that goal not get it back a bit, though? Like, like I, think, I, think, I, think, I think if we get beat there, it's like... Yeah. I think everyone's going in. Like, so, so what... If we get beat... If we get beat there, if Leeds draw tomorrow, we are we are down as it stands. The, the, pro- the, pro- like, the, the problem that I've had for the last few weeks, and I've, I've I've been tweeting this out for the last few weeks, and people have been disagreeing with me for the last few weeks on it. But like, we keep going into these must-win games and drawing, and drawing them, yeah. and then going, <laughs> oh, but actually it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a must-win if we don't win. Like, like. We can't just keep kicking the yeah. can down the road. We are, like, we are, we are in danger have, of someone doing a break. We have like, we have literally yeah. kicked the can down the road up until it's hit the back wall now. Yeah. Like yeah. that that's where that's where we've reached. We're kicking the wall. Yeah. <laughs> and and now we've reached the point where it is out it is yeah. it is out of our hands. Yeah. Like we we've reached that point and I just can't I just can't take confidence from that. Like Palace was a must win game, we didn't win it. Like Fulham, I think was a must-win game. Yeah. We didn't win it. This was a must-win game. Leicester. We didn't win it. Leicester was a must-win game. We had so many chances to win that. We didn't win it. As soon as we did not win that Leicester game, we needed to win both this game and the Bournemouth game. We like we just had to. Like the Brighton game. Like I really feel like the Brighton game has pulled the wool over not not just the fans' eyes, but like the players' eyes. Like yeah. Yeah. the play. I really feel like. We won against Brighton, and the players really felt like a weight lift off the shoulders, and they were like, "Oh, we're not really in this. We're not really in this relegation fight anymore." Guess what? You are. Yeah. Like, yeah. at the end of this weekend, we could be nineteenth. Like, like half a billion pound later, we're eight days away from the end of the season, asking for favours. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. It's just like. And, it, you know, post-match reactions on this podcast are all about the previous 90, but it's it's very, very difficult, isn't it, to extrapolate every single issue of this well, team back to way and above the actual team itself. Well, none of us are going to be running on a pitch next week, are we? No, 100% we, not. Like, no, absolutely like, not. Like, no. it's, it's, it's different this time, isn't it? Like, I, I like to think, you know, I, I appreciate, you know, we were saying this during the game today, and it... If you go 2-0 down at half time, then you know, if if you get that situation back to a positive one, then obviously emotion takes over. But I think the all of the you know, all of the things I said earlier about the goodwill and the excitement about being just not not that not quite bad enough to go down. It's all been used up now. Um the major change has to happen yeah. and I think that, that literally starts at the blowing of the full-time whistle next weekend yeah. and I think you, you're dead right you know the bus welcome might happen but but smoke bombs and managers dancing on the director's box we are not going to see next weekend I, th- I think obviously I'm I'm biased but you know last year I was there working for the Echo doing it and we published an open letter and like the front page of the Echo read we love you Everton please don't do this again and here we are, like literally yeah. a year later, in the exact same position. What are your worst position? Probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll go yeah, to the yeah. last day. Could no, that's down. it. Yeah, yeah. Re- realistically, in a worst position. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, realistically, in a worst position. So, yeah, yeah like, it, like I, I completely agree with Mark there. Like, it, like, what, whatever happens, you know, at, at the end of this season, whether we stay up or whether we go down, absolute change needs to happen from the final whistle it doesn't matter who's spouting whatever in the Daily Mail like it, yeah. like it, like it, it, ju- it just doesn't matter like the, these people need to go yeah. like, they're, they're holding the club back like they are custodians of this club and yeah. they are holding us back they need to go I think on the subject of immediate change you know obviously we're 
we're, we're a week out here from actually knowing what Everton's fate is, but we'll be with them once Chelsea fucking phoned me, so it's gone. There we go. We're back. We're back. Sorry, my wife phoned me. Sorry, <laughs> so, sorry, Chelsea, if you're listening. I love you really. Uh, we'll, go, we'll, we'll go back to Mark Mosey now. Talk about Everton oh, next God. week. I feel like I need to ring her and apologise for you. Um, but you know, the, on 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 that subject of immediate change, I think I, I'm I'm not I'm not saying that within three days of Everton's possible survival that Sean Dyche needs to be sacked but there has to be a sit down to decide whether for the future of the football team for the next couple of years or you know even to get to Christmas it, it, is he being here the best thing uh, and you know I'm, I'm not saying he is or he isn't but I think the mistake that we made after Frank Lampard was that a lot of goodwill was just handed on a silver platter at yeah. that point wasn't it you know you've kept us up um, we'll see how it goes and then we'll try and just kind of wing it from after the World Cup which is exactly the situation that we found ourselves in um, I think it, I, I think it the mistake that we made last year and I hope that we won't make this year is that it's fine to say we hired a man to do this particular job and hopefully he does it but, but that, that. that's where the line yeah. is drawn yeah. and then we, we all sit down and think about what's next and are the right people in place you know that's Deitch that's his coaching staff that's everyone above him and it's everyone under him as well in terms of playing staff as well um, th- that, that's all of that's all included in the philosophy of this can't happen again and you know the, the words that, that the echo printed and the words that I've just said in hindsight they were all just words we all just said this can't happen again we, you know and we all we all sat back on the that's assumption that's all we can do isn't it <laughs> yeah. we did yeah. but a, a, everyone collectively sat back last year on the assumption that we're Everton and you know this season was awful and we're all very sorry but it can't happen again and the reality now that we all realise is this this will keep happening again if you don't perform in whatever role that you're in yeah. Um, yeah. you know uh, the, the only people that have been held to account at any point for even a brief moment are fans because <laughs> we, we seem to be the one who, who put way too much pressure at, at every at every point in this cycle but um, you know I, I just I, did, I didn't see an Everton today you know I'll, I'll be I'll be fully behind them next weekend and I, I hope that we get a positive result and, and many more positive results from teams around us but I still, do, I still don't feel like there's an Everton I can invest in at the moment. I, I probably feel like last last season there was more about the club with Richarlison and, and people yeah. like that. There was more that I could really buy into. Um, we're, we're a shell of a football team at the moment. I don't, I don't think there's any form of collective care about us other than the fact that we all want to protect this institution that we think belongs at the top level. Um, that that sense of entitlement could could be washed away by a very very bad lead or less the team next week uh, and I think it, it would make for a very sorry season and also a very a very sorry end to Goodison Park and I think that God, that's yeah. that's the thing that weighs heavy on my shoulders at the moment is that you know if someone tells me that Everton are going to be bad for five seasons then I'll, I'll take that on the chin because I've watched a bad Everton team for 25 seasons <laughs> but what watching the final years of Goodison Park in a championship full of really awful football teams that come and turn us over every weekend is not something that, that sits well with me at all. I think the problem is that like you say that it's a, it's a really bad Leeds and Leicester team. We only beat Leeds this season yeah, by a yeah, freak yeah, yeah. Yeah, Seamus yeah. Coleman goal. We didn't beat Leicester this season. Yeah. Even Forrest couldn't beat them this season. Yeah. Like, this is our issue. Like, well, Southam- we Oldham lost to Southampton at home. Yeah. <laughs> we lost to Nathan Jones at Southampton at home. <laughs> hey, Nathan is- Jones at Southampton stopped City winning the treble. <sighs> the quadruple, even. I'm, I'm, I'm not being funny. Like, yeah, yeah. like the, the, these are these are the kinds of results that you just you're always going to look back on and just go, my goodness, I ha-. like, <laughs> like, like, gen- like genuinely, this this squad is bad. Don't get me wrong. Like the recruitment of this squad has been poor. I'm not. I'm not saying that's any different, but some of the games that these players have let slip through their fingers are absolutely criminal, and I, I, I just don't. Fulham at home is the one for me. That's it. I, I, I just don't. I just don't want it to. I, I don't want it to ever be the case that like everyone's like, you know, like the 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 fact that 
pressures on the board right now is fantastic. Don't get me wrong. But that shouldn't detract from the pressure that's also on the players and the manager yeah. because they are also yeah. massively underperforming. Like, everybody at the club at the minute is massively underperforming. And I just don't want that to ever get lost in this cloud of misery that we've yeah. that we've ended up in now. And, you know, like, obviously, you know, we're speaking now, like, Forrest could lose, Leeds could lose, Leicester could lose. <laughs> Still no, no. <laughs> yeah. Like, they, they all could lose at this point. And, that, like, we're, we're just going, all right, OK, we, we just need to beat Bournemouth on the last day and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, it, like, I, I just can't help but feel a bit melancholy after yeah. after this game. It, it, it It's just a bit... Uh, There's no situation, is there, where a draw will definitely be enough? No. Even next, if next even, week, even if Leeds lose, I don't think there's any situation where if Leeds lose tomorrow, I don't think there's any situation where a draw would be enough to keep us up. I feel like to make certain, it, it, just in case in case Tottenham go full Spurs. Yeah, yeah. Then, I mean, like which they will. Five, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. they will. Let, let, let's be honest. Imagine if yeah. imagine if a Charleston consolation of four one keeping us up. I think if, I'd, I'd prefer Dan Juma. If, oh, that would be funny. That would be very funny. Uh, Everton would try and say credit for that as well, wouldn't they? Like, oh, yeah, we knew what we were doing all along. I think he was going to be there on the last day. Very, very quickly, because we've gone on for a while here. Um, I mean, I met your dad today, Adam, for the, for the first time. Mose, I know your dad. My dad was here today. They've all been through it. They were at Wimbledon. They went to Coventry. How do you feel about having our own version of that? Next week. I mean, do you remember Coventry Moose? Yeah, I'm trying to think. Of, I'm trying to think about where us and Bolton were. I think as long as we matched Bolton's results. No, we need to better their results. Excuse me. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah, and they they got beat by Chelsea, yeah. didn't they? Um, I remember turning up to that game and people crying in their seats before I even sat down for the game. And that that was, you know, how old were we then? Like ten or eleven? Um, and thinking, oh my god, this is like, this is people's lives. Um, it, you probably don't get quite that level of drama next weekend purely because we start in a better position. Well, we might not. Very true. <laughs> Very true. Um, you know, we're, we're, again, we're asking for favours here, but we, we, if we are potentially in a situation where we just need to match other people's results, I think the the worry next week is that I could very comfortably see either one of those sides down with us getting three points. Um, you know, Spurs... West Ham, all of these teams that we're asking to do us favours over the next few weeks, they've all phoned it in. Um, uh, you know, you, you like to think that Bournemouth have done that as well, but um, if I was to pick one of those three teams that looks up at a scoreboard on 60 minutes and shits itself, it would be ours. Um, <laughs> and I think that's the that's the major worry. You know, I think, and you know, fans are guilty of that as well. We're all, you know, ask, show me a fan base oh, who we've got all that to come this week. Do you show the scores on the? I mean, Adam's yeah. going to have to give us all the Goodison Park press box Wi-Fi codes so we can get the signal in the ground. <laughs> Loads of that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I might get off at our time just so I can text everyone. Um, I'm, I'm out the country. Yeah, I'm out the country next week, so it's fine. But it's, um, I don't know. It feels as though this year, it's not crept up on us, but certainly going back to that sort of Howard Kendall, you know, Mikhail Madar era, it, it felt as though we, we were we were pretty much the worst team in the league and by some miracle we'd given ourselves a chance. It, it's hard as an Evertonian not to occasionally glance at the squad list and think, there, there's surely some quality there. There's, there's some big money footballers there who should be them. capable. <laughs> and then you see them today, yeah, and it, it really it really knocks your stuff in area. Um, it, it, it's hard to know emotionally where you'll be in, what, well, dead on eight days' time because we don't really know the situation that we're going into from, from teams around us. But um, the, the big worry as is the eternal Everton problem is how do we score football goals? Uh, and I think that that's something that, that Sean Dyche has a lot of thought to put into this week. Um, you know, I, I'm glad that we turned to Damari Gray this weekend because, yeah. um, albeit not quite as productive as we needed him to be today, and I appreciate everyone who thinks he's the most frustrating footballer in the world. He is someone who, every time he gets the ball at his feet, thinks about directly running at the opposition goal. And we simply haven't got another player like that. Um, you know, one of them came on today and is utterly terrible. Uh, and the other lad, mad as well, 
have just got on the train and got back to Lime Street at the point of Mason Hall game coming out. I don't even know which one you're talking about. <laughs> well, <laughs> it could be a few it, it, Like, <laughs> genuinely, about, it could have been about 10 of the squad. I'm talking about Neil Mope being the awful one and Ellis Sims being the one who oh, might right, as well okay, not right, exist. Okay, yeah. um, why, did, why did we call back it, Ellis Sims? Like Chelsea goal, mate. All right, well, okay. Kept us up, that goal. Yeah. Uh, Adam, how, how do you feel, mate, very quickly before next week? Um. I genuinely don't know. Are you going to turn your phone off and just forget it happens when you're away, or are you going to like refresh oh God, constantly? Yeah, I'm not. I, I, I'm not there, so I, I, I have a legitimate out. You will not do that though. You'll be, no. you'll be on it refreshing all the time. Uh-huh. Yeah, like I, I, I won't be able to escape it. Uh, so, yeah, uh, like I, I, I will still keep involved. I'll still be annoyed. Uh, I'll still, uh, I, I. I, I like, it's it, it, it's so hard to quantify how you feel like at this point of the game. Like as I say, uh, like I, I still think this was a must-win game and we didn't win. But if both Leeds and Leicester lose, then obviously it's a point gained. So like, but like it it, it just depends. It, it really does just depend. If we if we go into if we go into next week's game in the relegation zone. I really fear for the mentality of these players yeah. to get us out of it. Like that—that that is. Fear for myself. <laughs> yeah, but like, uh, but like, it—it's it, all down to the players at this yeah, point. It, it like, possible. it's got to be down to the players at this point, and that would be, that would be the situation where I'd really fear the most. Like, like them going into the this Bournemouth game, as you say, Bournemouth have got nothing to play for, but. We've seen this so many times in the past. You know, us going into games against teams that have got nothing to play for. We put so much pressure on ourselves and we crumble. I've, I, would, I would be very scared that that would happen again. So, yeah. I, 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 like, I know that's not the answer to the question you wanted. No. But I, I genuinely don't know. That, that shift in mentality of it's down to the players mm. was summed up with one flag today in our for away for end. Us. For us. Yeah. And that that's that is collectively the Everton fans saying I, I you know, I've I've said it time and time again, I don't think it's too much to say that we we kept this football team up last season. Uh, and I know it, that the like, players it was the, fan, it was the fans and Rich Allison. Like yeah, uh, yeah. I've I've said that yeah, for months. Yeah. The, the fans the, and Richarlison were the were the ones that have kept us up. You know, and Richarlison left, and now the fans are pretty tired of trying to <laughs> trying to bring the we're rest of injured. these players. We're all coming up. off on, yeah. on thirty now, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. We can't. We can't <laughs> just go and sell. You're getting paid like fifty grand a week. Yeah. How are we the ones that, that yeah. need to that need to drag us up now? I have to get three trains here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the, I'm the one who's in charge of this, but. You know, all, all those things that we've said about the goodwill of, of the fans has dissipated. And the, the the worry is that we, we all know that Everton can't be relied upon in, in yeah. these situations. And, you know, we'll, we'll of course all be there and we'll all, we'll all play our part. But um, th- there has to be a moment in life where buying into the whole thing that is Everton gives you a little bit of something back you know <laughs> what one one away it's game such a man who's mid too much to ask yeah but like what what have we ever what have we ever taken away from 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 being this I the, my best night of being an Evertonian was willing Liverpool to win on Monday night <laughs> it, it was such a great 90 minutes and I thought we were chatting to our, our Liverpool support and mates Matt and thinking is this, is this what this sport is to you every weekend because this, this is ace we're, we're great you know Leicester are never going to catch us and it, it was just a lovely moment to be in but um, yeah I I think I think the concern that most of us have is that we're relying on the Everton players to be to be not shit at football, um, <laughs> and that 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 is that is clearly a, a massive obstacle. Um, it's I'm 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 re- again it, it, it's really hard because we don't know the we don't know the situation that we're going into, but um, I I stand by the statement that I think most of us believed in after the Brighton game and that one more win should get us over the line 
Uh, and I know, I know we think about worst case scenarios with all the, of these other teams, but they are also very bad at football. Um, and I, I, I do think that that. Wow. Horace uh, Gore. Oh, oh God, you're ruining my life. Oh, um, we're just about to wrap up on them as well. <laughs> I, 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 you know, Forrest are, Forrest are clearly out of this now. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I do, I, just, I do. Just for people who, yeah, um, Adam is on the floor at this point. Um. <laughs> I, I do stand by the fact that the post Brighton one more win gets us out of this. Um, and you know, it, the, the reality <laughs> of of the situation that Everton are in now is that if if someone offers you the chance to beat a, a, an unmotivated Bournemouth team at home, if, if you don't beat them, you deserve to go down. Uh, and you know that that may well happen to Everton and Adam has essentially just ruined my life and yeah. I'm out yeah. um, what a terrible way to end the podcast um, but Everton are still just about imagine how bad that would have been if Mina on the score that's all I'm going to say yeah. Um, but yeah I mean it's going to be a horrible week it's going to be a horrible build up it's going to be a horrible 90 minutes next Sunday but we'll be there um, Adam will be on his holidays um, which is very nice for him. Yeah. Um, but we'll, we'll take you through all the way. Deary me. We'll see you on the other side of the toffees. It's Rob and Dave for our thoughts on Everton uh, managing to nick a one all draw away at Wolves at uh, the Molyneux well, Stadium. Um, and we've spent, <laughs> since that game's finished, trying to put our heads together and find out some things to talk about in the right direction so you'll probably hear maybe some apologies from the pair of us, how this goes in the direction it does because uh, normally we try and keep things under control <laughs> but yes uh, everything to do with post match that we do there's a lot to talk i mean there's a lot of lot of uh moving parts here dave exactly right exactly right and i suppose that's what people come to us for it with the emotion uh. at the end of it and sort of tell us what you think straight away don't just sit there and think about it first um yeah one, one of the one of the first things i wanted to talk about was the the sean dice effect in the match and um mm. what he ended up doing in the game rather than the lineup himself which i don't think he could have done much more than he did um, but what he had, what he did. Well, Dave, can doing... I can I push back on that slightly? Yeah, of course, of course, of course. And, and again, I I want to acknowledge uh, first and foremost that there are a lot of bad options here. <laughs> you know, especially especially with and did we ever think we'd be saying that Mikolinko was this linchpin that's been missing <laughs> that 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 suddenly really changed things for us? I mean, I I, I don't think we thought we'd be here, but. I think if I had, I, I think if you were going to go, if Daish was going to try to say, instead of going to a back five to start, we're going to go with a back four, mm. but we're going to have McNeil play left back. To me, I would have, I, I know, I know the whole narrative about Holgate after last week, but you know, that was against the best side in the world right now. Right. I I'm, I'm not sure. And again, I, I'm not saying Holgate is any kind of uh prime ideal option playing fullback, but um, I, I think that the two pronged effect of putting McNeil there and not that, and by the way, I think McNeil actually pro- played pretty admirably, all things considered uh, mm-hmm. it, it is time at left back today. But I would I would just say, look, if you're not going to go five at the back, you're not going to go with like Mina Keen Tarkovsky to start, and and you know maybe you do a Wobie and Patterson as wing backs to start. If you're going to go back four, just go ahead and make it Holgate. Try to survive there versus taking your most influential attacking player, and that's frankly what Dwight McNeil has been lately. Yeah, um, yeah. out of out of a, a game on the road where. You know, especially given what we saw the last time Everton were playing away from home. I mean, it was McNeil was just the he was uh, he was the fuel to that fire. And it was it was tough. And you took him out of out of things. Then you had what seemed to be this never ending calamity uh, that just started with Calvert Lewin going off with Nathan Patterson going off. It, It you know, they they get the goal. It just felt like we were hurtling towards absolute calamity. And I, 
I, I will say that Deitch, you can argue, I guess, that he felt like uh, this is the best I could do to start this game. I would have maybe done something slightly differently. Yeah. But I think what was more alarming, Dave, was <laughs> I gotta say, it's it's weird to talk about, isn't it? Because on the one hand, I think if you're gonna keep that back four after Patterson goes out, anyone but Michael Keen it right back. I don't understand why at that point you don't pull the whole gate into the game. Yeah. Uh he yeah. goes with Keen. And predictably, uh, it, it was a tough watch. It, it is a minor miracle Wolves didn't get a second. When you mm. look at the the volume of chances that came came against this, and yet without Keen, uh, maybe we don't have that <laughs> that that Keen to Mina uh, a connection for the end. It doesn't totally validate the choices by Daesh, obviously, because I think the order of those decisions was important. It, it, it just has felt like uh, it has felt at times over the last several months since Daesh took over that it's one step forward, one step back, maybe sometimes two steps back with yeah. him. And you understand that, of course, we all acknowledge that this squad has some severe imbalance, some severe limitations. The only thing we asked for Daesh to do was to not create more problems. And I feel like on balance, Dave, and, and and ultimately it's all about whether we stay up, right? But on balance, it is hard to argue that Daesh has not made things more difficult with, for himself with some of the decisions that he has made over the last couple of months. And here we are, uh, you know, is, this is a Rorschach test, right? Dave, you look at the end of this game and it's a point that keeps us, you know, in a in a decent but not controlling controllable situation for our fate. And yet you went into this game thinking we really needed a win today. And so I I wonder if McNeil starts uh, in an attacking position, the midfield's a little more balanced and you just kind of do what you can with, you know, him with McNeil getting back there to maybe help shield Holgate a little bit on that left-hand side. I would have rather gone with that than what you did today, which was you took your most influential attacking player, put him in defense, and then kind of it just created a weird domino mm. effect. Uh, I I I just don't get it. But this is where we are, Dave. We got a lot to talk about, and we got a long eight days ahead. Yeah, I mean it's it's purgatory, isn't it? Between now and, and next Sunday, half four, um, which you know w- waking up on that Sunday morning is going to be difficult enough as it is to be thinking about it, regardless of how long you think about it this week, which will be every single person uh, in a blue shirt who associates themselves with our football club. But um, just going back to what you said there about the um, the lineup, the different changes he made, um, I mean it completely baffled me when what well, Patterson gets injured just on the half hour, he decides to put Michael Keane on. <laughs> and then this is where this is where my head starts getting a little bit fucked up because <laughs> you're thinking, okay, you're putting on a midfielder who you it seems to be his son. Uh, somebody said to me on Twitter or something like that. Um, but then you're thinking, all right, fine, you're going to play him in a defensive style of a right back. I.e., he's not going to go off the over the halfway line. He's going to try and win every header ball that comes in with Tarkovsky and Mina on set pieces. That's what he's there for. Full stop after that, really. You just got to hope that he does a decent job. Yeah. Um, what what got me is what he then came out second half and started doing. And I sit here now, and I'm, I'm going to watch it over again later on um, because obviously there's so much emotion over the game. The fact that you can watch it again, knowing the results, make it a little bit easier. Yeah. Um, but, but seeing him start to meander around the pitch, at, at various times, I, I I can't believe that this is Sean Dice that's given him that tactic. <laughs> My, Michael Keane has never had more freedom under any manager oh, than Sean absolutely, Dice. Absolutely, and you know it, it did start <laughs> making is, me thinking when he when he started insane. saying about oh, when, you know when he scored that goal against Spurs and he said, you know what, I do that all the time in training and stuff. Oh. I'm, thinking, I'm sitting there watching this game, thinking this this can't be true. What am I watching here? Um, and everything you said there about. Wolves have got one of the fastest players in the world with the Dama Traore who, who cut in on that side. And I'm thinking this is going to be an absolute disaster, even oh. if Keane stays where we want him to stay. Yeah. That didn't happen. He starts moving forward with a Wobi on the right hand side and um, then starts trying to knock it to him, then get in the box. And then <laughs> so many times we were trying to attack. And then I saw him in like a, a number 10 position at times. I yes. saw him sort of drifting across the midfield. And I'm thinking, he's the striker what, what by the end of the game. On? 
<laughs> yeah, what is going on? And then, well, what's going on, Dave, is literally throwing the kitchen sink at this thing. But, I, mean, but this I don't thing, know what no, else it this could happens. Be. This happens so early on in the game. Now, yeah, yeah, you completely eliminate any any sort of feelings you have towards the way players are positioned. If you're going, i.e., in the last nine minutes of added on time, you're trying to get an equalizer. That is when the kitchen sink goes in. But for the fact that it was still playing away from home at a side like I've just mentioned there with a, a, a really Fast player who you know, let's face it, Keen isn't isn't the fastest of runners in, in you know in a in a school. He wouldn't be the fastest runner right now. But you you get into a situation like that. Um, I didn't think, or I certainly don't think, Sean Dice has said, "Look, we need to go gung ho here straight away." Um, having said that, if I didn't know what was going to happen there, I'd have said, "When you get to sixty, literally, you've just got to go for it." Then you can't, you can't. If you're losing the game one nil. You know, you might as well lose it regardless of the scoreline, um, yeah. rather than actually having a go. And at that point, when we got to half time, we hadn't had any shots on target. We were we were the better side in the first half, and that's the that's the point I want to come back to first. Is yeah, I actually felt first half, it was the first game in a long time, aside from the the free uh, Brighton win last week, that I looked and thought, you know what, Everton have got a sense of control here. They've they've got a platform to build on in this game the midfield look reasonably close to knowing what they're doing with each other they look like they would sort of put together a side that could attack when we wanted to to also leave a midfielder or two back when we were up front for anybody to counter attacks it actually looked to me like hang on why have we only found out that this side can actually do something like this in the 37th game of the season <laughs> yeah yeah Oh, I, yeah, I, I, the first half was just so frustrating, but yet it's not like it's frustrating from the standpoint that we haven't seen games like this before, you know, where we, we seem to, you know, get some grip on the game and we're just missing chances. And, and I, I even remarked, uh, at one point, um, I was, you know, and I, I was in one of many group chats, I think at that point, And I think I said, DCL's getting closer. You know, I thought Calvert Lewin looked like he, you know, there was there was some danger there. They were getting balls to him. He just kept getting his head a little too far under it. I think Mina had a chance also where he where you know he got uh, under the ball. It just, I, but it felt like like in the first half, like all right, this is nil nil. We're it's taking a little time to build into this game, uh, but but they're gonna eventually you know cash in here. And then when Wolves score, it's just that thing that we've seen multiple times this season where someone, for whatever reason, doesn't just take the guy down on the break uh, when there's when there's a pretty clear opportunity to, Dave. Like, it was, it, it's the customary, hey, I'm going to take this yellow card to avoid uh, avoid a, a, a calamity. And it, it just... It just was against the the run of play. It felt like a bit of a gut punch, and then suddenly, not only do we give up the goal, we we're in a position now where we're losing, you know, influential players. Uh, it, it, and and Calvert Lewin, I I just I yeah, I mean, I'd say I'd never seen anything like it, but I mean, I think we've seen some of this. We've seen a lot of this from Calvert Lewin over the last couple of years with his injuries. Um, you know, we've obviously seen it in in Yerry Mina's time at Everton. It's just frustrating when when a guy just can't get his body right and um it, it just it threatened to all fall apart from there if you you know look i i have so many conflicting feelings about this dave we we really needed to win i also though have to give the players credit for at least uh not allowing the 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 bleeding to just expand uh, you know to become a gusher if you will uh, i don't know how they kept wolves out uh, i i don't know how wolves didn't you know go up 2-0 and finish the game off i really don't it was a lot of resolute last second defending it was you know, it was a little bit of Jordan Pickford here and there. It was a, a combination of it was that and Wolves just frankly not capitalizing on some guilt edge chances. But um, to be in a position at the end where I, I really thought even when they put up nine minutes of stoppage time, I don't know about you, Dave, but I felt like they could give us 18 minutes and it just doesn't it doesn't feel like it's going to happen today. Uh, it really doesn't. And 
to get that equalizer when we did what i mean you guys probably could hear me screaming across the atlantic <laughs> it was uh you know my wife just kind of who had her headphones in looked at me with a bit of a bit of an eye roll but she got it she's like i understand you know i know <laughs> and, and so i i i look i i think that there is this game which is in many ways, a microcosm of both the Everton season and the overall era of Mashiri, which is a squad that is, you know, consistently imbalanced, short in certain areas. Um, you can make it about the, you know, medium term and go back to January and th- and look directly at the egregious uh, mishandling of 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 our resources and the window to get us into a situation like this final game, you know, this, this penultimate game where uh, that spending in January translates directly to, to exactly the, 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 the place you find yourself in at, at the Molyneux and, and, and for us to be in a position to once again, be relying on and, and fingers and toes crossed on Calvert Lewin's fitness, not only today, but going into this final game against Bournemouth, it's, it, it just feels like whatever happens, um, you know, if we go down, Dave, we can't really have complaints, can we? I mean, we we've we've been begging for like not we the fans, obviously, but this club with its actions and its its inaction, frankly, over the last few seasons has has brought this upon themselves. And so, if we find a way to you know wiggle out of this predicament then we're going to remember you know Yeri Mina's goal today as as this this huge moment um and if we go down it'll just be another footnote in what was ultimately uh, you know too little too late for Everton mm. yeah i think um, it's it's normally this type this time of year that me and Matt get together and have a look at what we want to do over the summer um, in, <laughs> yeah. in regards to content and whatnot. And obviously, it's um, very much on the back burner, given the fact we don't know what division we're going to be in yet until next Sunday night. Um, but one of the the things, and obviously last summer was the Lampard thing, and um, you know, oh, we can't ever let this happen again. Lo and behold, it's gone and happened again. Um, obviously, there's going to be an an extensive few hundred chats about what 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 should be going on in this football club, um, and that's even without looking at potential buyers and whatnot that we've seen again this week. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> given the the magnitude of of Sean Dyche and when he came in to get to a, a, a stage like this, um, and again, this refers back to a lot of the discussion we've had about him in in recent weeks, um. I just I just can't help but feel at the end of the season, look, even if we stay up, it's mm-hmm. very, very easy. In, in both ways, of course, whether you criticise him or whether you support him or, you know, you, you've loved what he's done. Um, you know, hindsight's great with that, but I I don't think I'll be able to get out of my mind, regardless of what we end up doing, what he's done when we've well certainly travelled aside from Brighton, which is a complete it's it's completely different to anything we expected this season when it's the thing that sticks out for us. It's, it's gonna be all of our favourite games this season. Yeah. But the stage we've gone now, what he did today, the change he made, if we'd have come out of that game without winning, if sorry, we didn't win, coming out of that game without drawing and getting a point. Oh. I I think that and it goes without saying in many ways, but I think that there'd be a hell of a lot of criticism thrown at Sean Dyche. Um, look, it's often the thing, it's it's a cliche thing, isn't it, in, in the sport itself, that when a manager makes a substitution and the sub does something like an assist, like a goal, like Michael Keane did, then they're going to be celebrated. They're going to be lauded by people. But it's that fine line of, well, if that didn't happen, I guarantee you right now, that's all you would see if you went on social media would be, a lot of criticism, regardless of the individual performances by some who I thought were really poor. I thought the core actually stunk the place out. Yeah, he no, managed to stay on to the end of the game. I thought that just a gay was really poor as well. The goal Onana was scored, bad. The whole midfield was bad today. Yeah, it was on really Onana was... as well. Yeah, absolutely right. And the goal they scored made me feel sick. Um, because they, they got the, the run from the core trying to make a meaningless pass um to, to back to one of our central midfielders. Then you give it to the fitter, like again, I said earlier, the fastest player in the Premier League, or possibly on the planet, who plays the sport. Um, and then there were two opportunities where I think it was almost 
it, it, it sort of defined the season that we've had with two midfielders who could have easily stopped that process by just taking him down and taking a yellow card down their throat. Yeah. Um, you look at the, the first one, I think it was with Onana initially. He sort of runs past him, um, which is going to happen with any pace of any player because he's on his back foot. Um, and could have taken him down, he didn't. Then the worst one was just a gay who just about keeps up with him for the minimal second as he gets past him. All he needs to do, throw his arm out, you know, pull his pull his shirt. You get all sorts of moaning in the crowd, but it's it's the most bog standard yellow card that you'll see a player get. Could have done that. And the the, the pure naivety. This is the type of thing I thought that, that Sean Dice should be really good at, or we'd see that much more often is that level of the nitty gritty kind of things that you see in a side that he's notorious for. What he did at Burnley, you want to see set pieces, you want to see play broken apart. You effectively you want to see the side that he manages be complete shit houses, can be complete sides that you don't want to watch when you're watching a game of football. Um and yeah, I I don't think we've seen enough of that from him. Certainly not in a situation where you've then let them go free at the top end. Uh, Pickford makes a decent save from his shot, and then um, they, they were able to just slop it in. Um, and and then that is where we're on the back foot for the rest of that game. Had we kept it nil nil, you know, you then are forced to make the changes that we ended up doing and got really lucky with. I, I as far as I'm concerned, when you put uh, Keane on where he was and he's able to put a ball across for for me to score on the floor as well. By the way. Anytime, oh, I don't think as as, as Yeri, you'll know this, Rob, more than anybody else. Has Yeri mean actually scored a goal on his feet for us? Because I'm thinking, yeah, every time I've seen him score this with a head. I think that's his first. I was I was talking <laughs> about it with my, my buddy Chris Smith, and and I I think I mean we'll have to check it. I think that's the only goal that I can recall that he scored with his feet. Now, yeah. who knows? I I could be wrong. And and look, I want to I want to take a minute because. <laughs> I never thought we'd be quite here, Dave, but yeah. it's yeah. funny how everything, the, the fate of this season in some ways feels like you can draw a straight line from Daesh to Mina and where this could have gone. Okay. And what I mean by that is on the one hand, um, you know, if we stay up that goal today, at that moment, and and by the way, not only nine minutes into stoppage, not only falling to the floor, it was actually, if you look at it, it was a pretty neat, neat and tidy finish by Mina, which you know you're not expecting that kind of center half to center <laughs> action. How quick uh, the reaction was on that, Rob? So interrupt. It, it was how how quick he was able to react from that because yeah, he's certainly not ex- uh, expecting the ball into his feet from what yeah. five yards out when. He sort of fires it across on the floor. He's done well yeah. to adjust and put it in. Um, you know, like you say, it was it was a completely different, different meaner in that in that certain part of the game. Um, yeah. And just the other point, just before you carry on, I actually thought he, he quite possibly our best player today. Oh yeah, I was going to say in the ninety minutes before that, just. I mean, and don't get me wrong, there were times just because of the nature of the game where where he was certainly stretched, but he he just he never got beaten and he was he had some really there were there were a couple of times where he had some really meaningful interceptions. There was one I think on a corner or some other set piece where uh Pickford jumps to to get a finger on the ball, misses it and Mina's head intervenes just at the last moment. I think that was in the first half and and I mean, it look played great. And and going back to what I was saying, it's it, it's going to be one of those things where if we stay up, uh, and believe me, I love the idea of this, Dave, um, more than what the uh, the second scenario that I'm about to outline. Um, Mina is going to have played in his final games for Everton a massive role in keeping us up with his defensive performances, with this goal, et cetera. On the other hand, if we go down, that is also the the pivotal point as well, which is you look at how he's playing. You look at the fact that he sat as an unused substitute for months, a fit substitute for months. And 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 look, I I don't believe that he necessarily needed to start from the second Daesh came in. If he needed to prove himself in training, show that he could stay fit for an extended period of time, so be it. For him to get his first 
minutes, not even yeah. start, but minutes yeah. under yeah. Dyche away at Brighton um, is it, it, if we go down, you're, you know, and especially if we go down by goal difference or if we go, go down by a point, Dave, how can you look at the way that Yerry Mina has played and think that we wouldn't have gotten another point or two here or there over the course of these last, you know, last month and a half or so, if, if Dyche had been less stubborn to stick with Michael Keane for as long as he did. I mean, he, he went from Cody to Keane to me, like Mina was his third choice. And I, I, I'm just, I think that, that that's the inflection point on some level. And I'm really scared. Like, I don't want, I don't want that. I, I, I will take any scenario where Everton stay up. But if we don't stay up, I think that of all the decisions, you know, you can you can certainly look at the fact that Dyche was hamstrung, you know, no pun intended after the hamstring injuries today, <laughs> but he was hamstrung by Calvert-Lewin's fitness, by the board's complete, you know, criminal inaction in January. He knew all those things when he took the job, you know, for the most part. He, he knew that there was a chance he wouldn't get anyone in in those last 48 to 72 hours when he took the job in January. But he believed and he said many times he kept better sides up than this. So really, it gets down to the choices that he made, some of which were enforced, but other choices, uh, some of these substitutions, the lack of substitutions over a period of time, sticking with players who, let's be honest, uh, were you know were were decisions that felt fairly or not like they were made based on you know blind spots and previous relationships and and and, and remembering the good old days in 2016 and whatever with him and 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 Michael Keane. That's that's the scary part. Is that I, I hope to God, we don't go down and we have to look back and say um, that the paradox is, is that if we had sacked Lampard earlier and brought Dyche in earlier, we'd almost certainly be safe. And yet we brought Dyche in and he knew he had a very thin margin of error and yet could not keep the yeah. effort of this side within the lines because of his own hubris, his own stubbornness and so on. And so that's where we're at. And uh, I think tomorrow to me is <laughs> tomorrow to me is huge. Obviously uh, leads if West Ham can get any result tomorrow um, it, it's, it's, it's huge for us, but if, if they get a win, then, I mean, we're really, we're really looking at a scenario. We, and right now we're just talking in terms of beating Bournemouth. I mean, obviously that's its own challenge, Dave. I, mean, yeah. I understand yeah. that. Yeah. But if, if you were telling me that, that Everton have a chance to, you know, if they win the game at home at Goodison with everything on the line, like I'd want that scenario over some other scenarios. Um, yeah. Wait, and, it's know, not in our hands. Yeah. But it's not in our hands. It's not in our hands. And we have no one to blame. But ourselves, this coaching staff, these players, I mean, and and obviously the sins of of several years on the bounce, that is that is what is to blame for where we are at at this very moment. I think that's an incredibly important point that you made about Daesh. Um in, in relation to Mina and look, it's not it, it it's hard to rank them and it's something we'll look at when we analyze this season, whatever happens in, in, in a fortnight or what whatever it turns out to be. But you know, when when you when you talk about the various issues, look, let's face it, we could only touch on a handful of them because we haven't got 24 hours to go through all the issues that have happened at our football club in the last 18 months, slash two years, as to why we've ended up in this position for the second time um, as well, which is, you know, it, it, it drives you mad. But when you when you refer to the easier calls that, that Dice could have done, and I'm, this is with me trying to stay away from hindsight when I say this in in response to what you've just mentioned there. I mean, I, I don't think it's a particularly difficult situation for him to have put Mina in. And, and, and I think, you know, somebody of his, I'm not going to say his quality, I'm going to say of his stature, um, I, I'm talking physical stature here, when, mm -hmm. you know, the brief that he's thrown in there, Dice has been to have a solid back four most of the time. Tarkovsky and Keane, uh, who he loved at Burnley, that must have been something, where as soon as he signed his contract, he's looked at and said, you know what, I'll keep this team up really comfortably because I've got two lads there at the back who did that exact job for me at Burnley and we're going to be fine. Um, for that level, and I'm, I, I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I speak so often 
Um, and, and Matt Jones would tell you this, I, I say far too much about the stubbornness of managers that we've had. Um, many of our listeners have heard me mention it many, many times regarding many different managers over the mm. years. But that level of stubbornness from Dice um, could ultimately be the thing that costs us in many ways because you know, regardless if we stay up or we go down from now on, these these different decisions he's made are, are, are large parts of the puzzle that will have done whatever comes to pass. Um, and what you refer to about a, 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 the, the situation of, well, how can you get a, I think probably the most, uh, most uh, highest priced defender that we've paid for hasn't had a second on the pitch uh, let alone to start until you get to what the thirty sixth game, the thirty fifth game of the season. Um, given how poor we've been, given how dreadful we were on the road, and then look, it's very easy to say again. Uh, it's no coincidence that he comes on the pitch, he starts, and we go and win a game away at one of the best sides in the league by five goals to one. No, none of us are that naive to be able to say that. None of us are as much as we support the guy. Um, and not you're not able to say that because that that would be ludicrous, but. I still think it's no coincidence that he's come in and we've looked different. And that performance... He, he felt like a shot in the arm, Dave, did he not? I mean, I... I no, correct. I that, this... That's exactly... That, no, that is exactly what you're talking about, Dave, and that's yeah. spot on. I think it's felt like there was... Again, it's it's probably wrong term to say relative calmness at the back because I think that has been... If we were to go into a deep conversation about him, which we're not going to, would be one of the issues that he's had is that he's he's been the opposite of that in terms of keeping us calm when he's played for us in the past. I think that's been a little bit of his Achilles when, mm. when he's played for us. But despite that, it's actually been the thing that he has done so well when he's come back in. He's yeah. played very in a very simple way, which we, again, something that we've needed for a long, long time. Um, he, every, every single thing that comes in the air, he deals with it with, just like he's, you know, looking at the ball doing nothing, and he doesn't even have to think about it twice. He's that good in the air. Um, the things that I've always worried about have been the things that he's been fine with, and that is pace. And if we play a higher line, which Dice started to do, I'd be worried if someone gets in behind him. Sure. That to me, I can't recall that being an issue since he's been back in 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 the last couple of games, even against even against Manchester City. Yeah. Um. At least so, maybe he's had fresh legs. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But well, I, I think it's who he is. I know. think I think it's more to do with his personality as well, Rob. I do think that um, because you know, you look today there, ev- everything he wants to fight all the time. So a lot of people that see modern day, you know, millionaire, billionaire footballers these days, it's just something that they do to look good. I I firmly believe with him that he does it because that's what he believes in how he plays the game. Yeah. And that that does have it, it, it does it does give everybody a shot. It gives everybody a well, why aren't we doing the same thing? Um, yeah. And you know, thankfully he stayed fit, which again has been the main issue that he's had. Oh, he got stepped his his foot and ankle got stepped on today, and I I just about you know sunk into the ground thinking, well here we go. Um, and yet and he got I mean, he's been knocked around quite a bit since he returned, and yet he keeps getting up, and it's that that's been an encouraging sign. And and yeah. look, I. I, part of me would like to give Dice some credit and his team credit for finding a way to get him back to, you know, a consistent level. You know, you'd say fitness, but but fitness is part endurance, part, um, you know, your ability to apply yourself in the game, um, but also it is frankly just finding ways to to not you know not have your have a muscle uh, you know betray you yeah. at the worst possible moment and and as we've seen with Calvert Lewin and what we've seen in the past with with yeah. Nina but look he's he's played like a guy if you want to sum this up Jeremy Nina has played like a guy today who knows that uh you know who well <laughs> let's let's make it as simple as possible Dave what do we talk about all the time in terms of what we want out of out of these players? We want a guy who looks like he gives a shit. We want a guy who goes out there, throws his body around, looks like he is playing, you know, looks and plays like someone who cares about Everton, who cares about this club, who is giving him, you know, giving everything he's got. 
Um, you know, there are a lot of guys who, who could be running out their deal on big wages right now who could just simply say, ah, you know, I got to protect myself for this upcoming free agent market that I've got to deal with in the summer and figure out my next destination. Yerry Mina has come in and played like his life depends on Everton staying up. That's all you can ask for. And for me, as someone who obviously loves him as a personality and as a player, knowing that he's leaving for him to go out on a, on such a high note like this, to me, it says a lot about his character, mm -hmm. says a lot about his quality. And, um, I, I just, I, <laughs> you know, Dave, we all, we all on, we all in the midst of the wild, wild West that is ever since Twitter, kind of love being right because we're all wrong so often about everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? And part of me like is rejoicing in the fact that I feel like my feelings on getting him into the side uh, be way before this uh, have been not only validated, but validated uh, times 10, uh, which is great. But I don't want to be right at the expense of us going down. Like I yeah. want us to find a way out of this. But what's very clear is that you know, on the evidence that we have in front of us, this is a guy that needed to be inserted into this side for the, as you articulated, I think pretty well, Dave, like guys like Gary Mina are the greater than they can be greater than the sum of their parts when yeah. they're on their game. And what that means is that you're getting the six foot five guy who can jump higher than anyone else. Who's really physical, who has great defensive instincts, who's got a head for goal. But you're also getting a guy that understands the mental game. He understands how to get under the skin of his opponents. He understands how to communicate vocally with, with his teammates. He understands how to keep them engaged off the pitch as well. Um, he has been a, guy, a glue guy in the dressing room that regardless of regimes or players, you know, I, I try and find anyone who has played with him that really has a negative word to say about the guy. Yeah. And, and I think that, that that's what leadership ultimately is. The tragedy of Yerry Mina's time at Everton is just that he hasn't been available enough. And there's nothing, you know, I, I think based on the evidence today, the talk that Yerry Mina didn't care about Everton or didn't care enough to try to tough it out to play for Everton. I, I think that if anything, these last few games today and hopefully what we see next week, certainly what we saw against Brighton, hopefully we can extinguish those sorts of, terrible it's, opinions yes. from this point forward <laughs> yeah absolutely right i think that's an important way to end um sort of our side of the podcast um and yet yeah, post match as we always do after every single everton game but this is a bonus one um because you'll have noticed before us uh, before us where mosey and matt and adam jones giving their review of it you also heard matt flusk uh who was down at molyneux giving his and you heard the crowd behind him as well. It's, it's a really good thing to listen to. Give us his quick thoughts on what happened in that game. Um, like Rob also said this weekend, you know, we still need to know what's going to happen uh, tomorrow as Leeds travel to West Ham on Monday. Hopefully, Newcastle at least get a point against Leicester, which should take them down, meaning that we go on to next week, Sunday, 4.30 at Goodison Park, Everton take on Bournemouth. And uh, as much as we've said it so for so many games this season, it is really win or bust. Thanks so much for listening to us, as usual. Um, we'll have plenty of build-up to that. We'll have plenty of reviews of tonight as well, as you always know. And, uh, yeah, stick with us as we're going to stick with the Toffees. Hey, Dave. Oh, uh, yeah, that's it. Go on, Rob, sorry. Well, I'm just going to say one thing because I'm going to put I'm, – I'm going into this next week very positive. At least we're not playing at the Vitality. <laughs> <laughs> that's an excellent point <laughs> yeah always they, they've always been a uh, kick in the bollocks haven't we ever since we oh, played them. thankfully yeah. it's uh, Bournemouth at home who've, who've been one of the teams of the season to be fair now they've stayed yeah. in the league so so simply anyway but we'll speak to you soon thanks for listening and up the toffees